be on this decade-long journey with you. This community of inventors, of makers, of problem solvers has proven year after year that together there is no limit to what we can accomplish. Join us for the 10th anniversary of the Hackaday Prize. Let's engineer a better tomorrow together. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the 10th Hagaday Prize Awards Ceremony. It's unbelievable that it has been a decade. And with that, I would like to start off. Magenta from the Design Lab would like to say a few words. Hi, everyone. Uh, we're back. How was everyone's day? <laughs> Heck yeah. Really excited for this ceremony this evening. Marks a big one, year 10. Technology is moving faster than ever, and it can be easy to fall down a rabbit hole of fear and distrust. Whether we're discussing the next job that ChatGPT is going to take away from us, or what online images we can really even believe anymore, it's never felt more true that with great power, there also comes great responsibility. Technology has huge potential to change the world in the right hands. Technology can empower us to connect across different time zones, languages, and cultures, but it's also easier than ever these days to block the things that scare you or mute the voices that challenge the status quo. If there's something that I've learned from this incredible open source hardware community over the years, it's to push past the fear of sharing your ideas, learning something new, or challenging the way that things have always been done. When you choose to open source a project, it can be a really vulnerable thing. You open your work up to feedback and critique, but you also open a dialogue that can lead to improvements, necessary help, maybe team building, and oftentimes lay the foundation for others to build off and take your project to places you might have never dreamed of. In a time where we can easily go a whole day having groceries, clothes, dinner delivered to our door, working remotely without ever dealing with someone face to face, Events like this are an awesome reminder that that's really not enough for most of us. The energy of everyone sharing their passions and truly nerding out together is palpable at Supercon. Hackaday Online has allowed us to all meet, start conversations, and Hackaday IRL allows us to continue those conversations, start new ones, and meet some of our hacker heroes. A while back, I did an interview with Jay and loved what he said about building companion bots and how it started so many conversations with new people. People wanted to learn more about this animated robotic creature he had with him. Just today, I learned from one of our workshop leads that they literally were first in inspired to chat with their current co-founder about an idea because of an article they read on Hackaday. If you've been to Supercon before, you've no doubt heard stories of people being hired onto teams or starting a new project because of connections they made here. Hackaday humanizes technology, whether it's appreciating retro tech, meeting up to share a new skill, spotlighting a super sweet hack, or literally creating the most affordable modular braille system out there. Your innovations inspire and give hope. For 10 years, the Hackaday Prize has celebrated game-changing open source hardware projects. Hackaday Prize and the community at large has shown that we're not afraid to make our ideas known. We're not scared to try and change the world with new innovations and exciting projects that push the boundaries of what's possible. Let's continue to use technology to open a dialogue rather than close it. In the spirit of trying new things, this 10th anniversary also marks the grand finale of the Hackaday Prize. But the meaning of what we do here will continue to live on. We will continue to be dedicated to celebrating and rewarding open source hardware for social impact. And don't worry, we're already planning epic Hackaday contests, Design Lab Dream Team residencies, Hackaday Europe in the spring, and most importantly, Supercon 2024. Let's close this final chapter of the Hackaday Prize with a bang, shall we? I'm very excited to get to the announcement of the winners for this year's Hackaday Prize. Let's get into it. Yeah. 
And as always, we've had a number of sponsors making the Hagaday Prize possible. And along the way, from the very beginning, has actually been DigiKey. So we have to say thanks very much to DigiKey for continuing their support of the Hackaday Prize. Oop. And we have Kevin Walseth from Digity, DigiKey to say a few words. Come on up. You know, next time I think Magenta, I should go first because I have to follow your conversation and what you just <laughs> talked about. And it's really hard to follow that up with something even better. So I'm not even going to try. I'm just going to say thank you, everybody, not only for being here in person, but for supporting the Hackaday community and tinkering with technology and electronics. I think we all know it's the best hobby, or if you're lucky, the best job in the world. So thank everybody for coming. Uh, it, it's so much fun. I've been here, I think this is my fifth or sixth in-person Hackaday. There's a couple years in there that screwed things up, but we won't have to talk about that. And my, be my favorite thing about coming here is I walk up and down that alley and I realize how amazing people are and how creative I am not compared to everybody in the audience. You guys are just amazing. You know, you, you see some of the retro things out there. I saw some really old computer monitors and gaming systems out there. And then all the blinky lights, like from where I'm at, you guys should see the blinking lights. It's pretty cool. The team that created the badge, it's a really cool badge it's here. It's a lot of fun. I've spent a lot of time tinkering with it. I was able to change the picture on it Actually, don't tell anybody, but my coworker did it for me. So it, it, it's just really cool. And the team that worked on the badge, I think everybody needs to give another hand to Magenta and the Hackaday team. All the work that these events take, I've, I've worked on events like this, and they're not easy. And there is a lot of late nights, I'm sure, a lot of planning. So a big hand to Magenta and the team. And a hand to yourselves, too. This is an amazing community. And thank you from DigiKey and all the DigiKey team. So thank you. Thank you, Kevin. So the Hackaday Prize ends, of course, with the grand prize. But along the way, there have been a whole bunch of finalists, 10 per round times five rounds, 50 of them. And that's one of the things that makes me most happy about the way we've done the Hackaday Prize, is that we get to help out a lot of exciting uh, projects along the way, not all of whom go to the end, and not all of whom you'll see here tonight, but all of which were fantastic in their own right. And this was in fields like education. Oh yeah, this year was the 10th anniversary Hackaday Prize, and so we kind of cherry-picked our favorite categories from the past 10 years, including education, uh, of course a wild card. We did green hacks, gearing up, which was an opportunity to show off your best self-made equipment. And then, of course, assistive technology, which has always been one of those challenges that really motivates the Hackaday community to come up with clever solutions. And so I'd like to get a quick round of applause for all 50 of the finalists. So many of these projects were awesome. And all these projects, of course, are on Hackaday.io and have been written up about several of them on Hackaday.com. So be sure to check them out on your own time. A lot of uh, hard work went into documenting these amazing innovations. So check them out, please. Of course, the Hackaday Prize would not be possible without the contributions of our judges. We recruit people from all over the globe, experts in their own rights, in their own fields, who are part of the engineering open source hardware um, community and uh, innovative you know, development fields. Uh, this year we had a lot of new faces that I'm excited to celebrate, so please give a round of applause for the folks that dedicate their time and energy to reviewing a lot of very intricate documentation. And you know, all these projects are so stellar. I know this job is not easy. I've heard from several of the judges personally that it's one of the things they look forward to most. They get awesome new ideas from the, reviewing these projects and it's always so hard for them to choose the top ones. So it's always a close race, and huge shout out and thank you to our judges for dedicating their time each year. So without further ado, let's get into it. I'm totally happy to announce that this year we had a sixth 
winner category, and that's the Protolabs grant. This is a $5,000 award at Protolabs to help turn a fledgling project into a reality. Let's hear what the judges had to say. This project frankly blew my mind. And I never would have thought to use audio to classify trash. I'm really excited to see where this goes in the future. The thing that took me about this project is that it seems like just such a perfect implementation of the technology that it's based on. It's like the perfect use case for it. And like, as cool as the project itself is, even if it doesn't make economic sense in every scenario, I can see how pieces of it uh, could be adapted throughout the industry that it lives in to make sense in a bunch of different places. Congratulations to the Proto Labs grant winner, AI Audio Classifier Recycle Bin. This project frankly blew my mind. I never would have thought to use Sorry, technology. <laughs> All right, I believe we have the winner in the audience. Can you come up to receive your award? All right. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, so I've never really experienced anything quite like this conference. Like, it totally blew my mind when I arrived here. So I flew all the way from Indonesia to here. It took like 25 plus hours to get here. And uh, of course, I got a little bit of jet lag, but like all the spirit and uh, the culture from this community give me a lot of energy to keep me awake. And then I feel like I need to make more stuff right now. I need to keep making. <laughs> And uh, I feel like I owe this award to all of you here and all of the open source community. Like most of the skills I've learned and uh, that I use for making this project, I've learned from the community. So, so this is for all of you here. And um, just. Uh, I want to speak a little bit about the project idea. I mean, it's it's pretty straightforward for me to think like if I if I go to any public parks, any any open spaces, like all of the the bit. I mean, for example, like um, outside, you can some of you might have drink a can of Coke, um, bottled water. They all get mixed up in the same um, same bin. So it's very hard to carry out like the recycling process for for such, uh, if, if they get mixed together. So when, uh, so, so the best sorting process happens should be on the, on the bin itself, not in the recycling facility, because it's almost impossible for them to, to separate those out later down the process. And um, uh, yeah, once again, I, yeah, just thank you for everyone. Thank you Magenta for hosting such an incredible event. Thank you Elliot, thank you all of you. Um, you're amazing, and to close, I would just want to say, let's keep innovating, let's keep sharing stuff, sharing knowledge, and um, and thank you, everyone. Next up, we have the fifth place award for five thousand dollars. Let's hear from our judges. The ability to read and write is such a powerful tool for upwards mobility. This project helps to make that tool more accessible to the visually impaired, and it does it all while staying affordable and equitable. The thing I like most about this project is that it takes a technology that I personally love and cherish and brings it into a completely new realm of uh, accessibility, both in terms of execution uh, and in terms of the accessibility that it can offer the community that needs it most. Congratulations to our fifth place winner, Braille Wrap DIY Braille Embosser. Oh my. The ability to read and write is such a powerful tool I'm so for upwards sorry. mobility. <clears throat> I'll get this right one day. All right, please come up. The winner, Braille Wrap DIY Braille Embosser. I believe you're in the audience. Come accept your award.
<laughs> oh, this is a surprise. <laughs> uh, you know, this machine is so magic. Uh, everything that happened with it is just mm, wonderful. <laughs> Um, I would like to thank uh, everybody uh, for uh, making open source because it's uh, always a great inspiration uh, to make uh, some machine that had some value, uh, value for some people. <laughs> and Braille is a very uh, important situation for education of blind children because uh, in several countries, uh, if you can't uh, learn the Braille and you are blind children, it is simply no education. So sometimes <laughs> uh, it's nice to have open source solution. Uh, maybe it's time to thank some people, my teammates, the Climate Change Lab, which is President Hugo Bain. Uh, the Mayuman Kit Association, where this project started start many years ago. An old academic team. <laughs> Next up, the fourth prize. Fourth place prize, $10,000. Like about this project is the way that a human interface was developed in a different way with different kind of sensing. Uh, and even though this is not a common way to sense a human interface device, it was really precise and cheap. Congratulations to the fourth prize winner Omnistic. Omnistic, come on up. Thank you. Wow, thank you. Uh, I was really happy when Hackaday announced the the bringing back the assistive tech challenge this year. So I was able to use all of the, the learning and the, uh, the advice I got for my 2020 prize, the Byte, and I dumped it into this to make it much easier to build, much more sensitive, and I hope like this will help a lot more people. Uh, the whole design is completely open source, as well are the tools used to make it. So um, yeah, thank you. All right, next up we have our third place award for $15,000. The thing that really struck me about this project was just the level of fit and finish. It was so, so well put together. The fact that you can stop wasted heat with the use of 3D printing and um, clever embedded systems. If I had this kind of system in my home, I would absolutely love to buy this thing for like every room. Just so well thought out. This project really impressed me with its incredibly polished and well-engineered design. It has a clear path to production and will help many households become more sustainable. Congratulations to our third place winner, AutoDuct Smart Air Duct. Congratulations to AutoDuck. This is a truly phenomenally polished project. Come on up. Yeah, uh, I'm a little bit speechless. <laughs> also literally because uh, my voice is a little bit broken today. Um, yeah, amazing. Um, first of all, uh, thank you very much. Uh, yeah, Hackaday team, uh, Supply Frame, and DigiKey for yeah, um, handing out this, this award. So it's amazing. So it's a, a great 
recognition of the all the work I, I put into this project. Um, yeah, but um, let me tell you what's the best thing about the, the Hackadar Prize uh, it, for, for me in this case, is that I, uh, yeah, <coughs> um, <laughs> sorry, uh, is um, that I, I had the idea for this for this uh, project already, I think, two years ago. Um, I felt the need to build something like this, but besides my day job, um, I didn't have the time and energy to actually work on that. But then at some point, I realized, okay, um, this could also be a, a cool a project for, for the Hackaday Prize. And this gave me the little extra push to focus on this project, um, get it done. And you know what? So it, it, was, it was amazing, it was fun to work on this project. Um, I learned a lot, so you can imagine that the prototype or the, the unit you see in the, in the video, that it's not the first iteration. And um, yeah, it was great to, to see that it actually solved um, the, the problems we, we had with our ventilation system. Um, so it made our, our home uh, more energy efficient and more uh, comfortable. And in the end, it, it even was fun to document the project. So uh, and the, uh, you probably know that that's not always the <laughs> most glamorous task for, for engineers. But um, yeah, uh, thank you so much. Thank you also for the, uh, com the community for inspiring me to, to build a project like this. I hope that um, yeah, many people out there will take my design, my blueprints to build their own units, um, get inspired, bring my design to, uh, to the next level. So thank you very much. Thank you and have fun. Coming up next, second prize, $20,000 prize. It's beginning to get extremely serious. This project for me was really special because it addressed one problem that I lived on. And the way that it was solved was really clever and really creative. It makes it super helpful for anybody starting out with electronics to um, move their passion and um, go forward with um, electric circuits, electronic circuits. And I really like the whole idea on how to communicate a specific information that is mandatory to the user. Congratulations to the second prize winner, Jumperless. Congratulations to second prize winner, Jumperless. Congratulations, come on up. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. Yeah. All right, I'm speechless because I didn't write a speech. Um, uh, I don't know what else to say. Thank you guys. This is awesome. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, this is a thing. Uh, I hope these get into the hands of a bunch of people because, you know, if I've seen what you guys do with batch hacking, like writing your own new things to do with this thing is like, this is just the beginning of what you can do with it. Um, so yes, please, I encourage everyone, write your own little scripts, do weird stuff that I had never thought of, and uh, yeah, thank you. <laughs> And this brings us down to the last place. The moment we've all been waiting for. Yes, first place, last slide, no. Uh, the $50,000 grand prize in Design Lab Residency. Let's see what the judges have to say about this grand prize winning project. So I really love this project because of its innovative, use of technology to solve a very important problem. I really like this project because it allowed me to see one, one specific problem that I was not familiar with. 
and the way that they came around with this solution was really clever and cheap. I really see a lot of uh, different ways to develop their design to be more manufacturing and more cheap in a future way, even though it is already really easy to manufacture. Congratulations to the grand prize winner, Electromechanical Refreshable Braille Module. Congratulations to the grand prize winner, the Electromechanical Refreshable Braille Module. You did a really good job. All right, please come up to accept your award. I believe you are in the audience after traveling very far to be here today. <laughs> come on up. I need a minute. Uh, <laughs> wow. Um, yeah, it's been. It's, wow. <laughs> My heart is racing. <laughs> it's been such a journey. I mean, uh, I've been working on this on and off for the last 10 years. Um, the first time I was introduced to the problem statement was when the uh, MIT Media Lab did a thing in, the, in India and talked about refreshable braille and braille in general and some people from Perkins were there and you know the importance of braille literacy and uh, you know why braille is still inaccessible to so many people and you know as an engineer it was an interesting problem or a uh, problem statement to sort of work on and I mean this last 10 years has been sort of I mean I through the same project I mean I've worked on so many different versions of the same thing over the years it sort of uh, allowed me to grow, and and the Hackett Prize has always been that uh, incentive for me to really push myself and and go forward. And I mean, uh, the last time I got, I think fourth place or fifth place, and reinvested all that money into you know into this and try to sort of make it happen. Um, so I mean, the first time around, I didn't know anything about anything in terms of engineering. The last time around in 2017 was the first time that I entered a refreshable braille module on Hackaday. I remember it was such um, just imposter syndrome, then thinking that I'm not good enough and the project's not good enough to sort of uh, uh, put on uh, uh, the uh, put on Hackaday and, and uh, apply for the prize. That I didn't even fin get it get it to the final round. Uh, but you know, uh, in 2017, uh, another ha assistive device of mine sort of uh, was one of the finalists, and that sort of gave me the confidence on of continuously working on this problem statement. And over the years, even sort of with this incentive, improve myself. You know, I learned PCB design, uh, uh, understood more about uh, uh, electronics, and and you know, I had to learn so much just to figure all of this out, even even now. And and it was interesting, like a lot of times that I would search the internet how to do this, how to do that. It would just be Hackaday articles and Hackaday IO articles that I would learn from to sort of figure this out. So, I think it's over the last ten years I've seen how much sort of the world has changed through this one project. Where I'm sorry, I'm, I'm you, you see, no, holding no, that. I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> Can you hold my camera? <laughs> I'm good. You have it. <laughs> so it's been crazy to just to see how the world has changed through the lens of this this project. Again, I think back when I started, there was just not much information available. Um, through the years, in terms of you know what. Uh, a single person can do in terms of, say, design, in terms of PCB develop, in terms of you know getting your entire PCB done and fabricated and and uh, with the components placed and just get it shipped to you uh, affordably. Uh, in terms of the kind of components that are available, you know, there's some sort of obscure components that I was just so I lucked out completely when it comes down to some of the components that I needed for this, like micro magnets that are like less than uh, half a millimeter in, in length, uh, ferrite cores that, weirdly enough, were the exact specification that I needed from DigiKey. Uh, <laughs> so it was, it was just weird. So say for example, I'll just, I'll, I'll just give you that example of you know how I, I 
didn't even know how ma magnetism worked. I, I thought I knew. Uh, but you know, if I, initially I thought it would be a good, great story also to tell that, but I was cutting um, paper clips and making the core for the electromagnet inside this, uh, and then once I sort of the initial prototypes would overheat because of the eddy currents it would generate inside, uh, and then um, uh, at that point in time I was going to give up. I mean, I, I put everything into this project. I thought like, how do I sort of go, uh, you know, back to this? It's just taking too uh, too long for it to actuate. Uh, the residual magnetism in the in the core would not allow the magnets to sort of uh, move the pins wouldn't, wouldn't go up and down and uh, I just decided to sort of do a little research and found these ferrite cores that were just sort of perfect on Digikey and, and immediately placed an order came all the way from the US and I think this was the last 10-15 days of the competition where I had to sort of change over the cores and I was almost going to give up um, so change dot Things winded again, and, and, it, and it just sort of worked so well, and uh, uh, it was just such a crazy experience. You know, that feeling that oh man, something like this works, and especially that I've been working for it for such a long time. Not only me, but the lot of lot of other interesting projects sort of focused on uh, refreshable braille displays that uh, you know I got to learn from, understand their mistakes, and sort of see how I can improve on, on that. So that was really interesting. And I, a couple of people that I want to thank, especially for this time, this project, uh, a friend of mine from, from uh, India, Chiranjeevi, who uh, you know, after, after my work day, 6 o'clock, I would get to his lab. And from 6, p, uh, 6 p.m. to 2 a.m., I would just work. And he would just entertain me with, you know, he, he had all, he had 3D printers. He had all these micro equipment. He had his watchmaker's glasses that were sort of uh, invaluable for me to sort of assemble all of these things. And I mean, he entertained me for almost a month uh, till 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock in the morning. So uh, thanks to him, as well as my, my fiance, who sort of, sort of, I mean, I would disappear for 15, 20 days and not sort of uh, be able to see her and just come back to sleep and then and go back to work next day. And just, I, I mean, it must have been hard for her, but uh, uh, sort of thankful to her to put up with all of that. Uh, and uh, yeah, I mean, it's just such a crazy experience, and 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 to be be num like the. F I, is there anything more that you one could achieve from the Hackaday Prize? I don't know. Like as an engineer, you know, I've looked up to Hackaday and the Hackaday Prize for so many years, and being here at the first place, it just feels so unreal. And I, I my fiance loves jumperless, and. I, <laughs> And I was like, it is, this, this project is too good. Like, that, that is amazing. Like, he's done such a great work on this thing. Uh, there's no way that, you know, I, I'll be able to beat that. So I, I was resigned to sort of lose to him. But oh my god, it's been such a great journey. Thank you so much for the Hackity team over the years to sort of keep this going, keep it becoming better. And the, the community of people that you've developed that, you know, it, it's crazy. I don't. Back in India, you, you can't just talk about these things that, oh, I use ferrite core and this thing. Not, it's not really interesting to anybody over here, over there, right? But here, like, everybody's interested to know your story. How did you figure this out? How, and, and I think that is an amazing thing to share, to, to create that, share that love for engineering, share that love for innovation, and um, just sort of make it even bigger and share that with the rest of the world through, you know, stories like this. And uh, yeah, thank you so much for having me. Uh, I, I still need to sort of <laughs> think this out. Thank you so much. Thank you. Congratulations. <laughs> all right. One more round of applause for all the amazing finalists this year. And as always, thank you very much to Supply Frame for putting this on, for the idea, for running this for the last 10 years. This has been an incredible commitment to the community, and they have given back so much to so many of the hackers who have entered their prizes, who have won any of the final rounds. It's absolutely fantastic what they've done for the Hackaday Prize for 10 years. So quick round of applause for Supply Frame.
And before we bring everyone up here, which we are going to do, I just have to say a quick personal note. I started at Hackaday shortly before the first Hackaday Prize ceremony and got to see what Satnogs win. And that was fantastic. And I was so rooting for, actually, I was kind of rooting for Chip Whisper or Satnogs. I can't remember. And I've been around for 10 years now watching the Hackaday Prize. And just the number and quantity and quality of all of the projects is really astounding. And I think this has been a really great run. And it's a with a really sad heart, honestly, that we are calling it 10 and done with the Hackaday Prize. But we're going to continue to do lots of smaller contests at Hackaday. Supercon carries on. We're going to do Supercon Europe. We're going to continue to push everything forwards and Hackaday IO. You can continue contributing your projects to us, and we would love to see that. But <laughs> I am shedding. I'm, I'm like choked up. Sorry. I yeah. Yay Hackaday Prize. Yay Hackaday Prize. <laughs> and of course, as we started the day with. You all and the community is what makes this initiative so special, and that's why we hope you keep coming back for more year after year to our events, to our online initiatives, supporting one another, sharing your projects, documenting your work as much as possible, and continuing to push and challenge one another. And as Elliot mentioned, we would love to invite anyone who's ever been a part of the Hackaday Prize, a judge, a finalist, submitted an entry, come to the stage. We're going to take a big group photo. And then any other housekeeping, tacos are outside. The party's going to start in just a moment. Uh, thanks again for another great Supercon Day 2 <laughs> award ceremony. Please come up if you've been a part of the Hackaday Prize.